Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Oh, thank you for tuning in. Um, we are very close to 500 subscribers. So as always, if you could hit that like bell, I would really appreciate that. If you could hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell notification so you can get notified every time I upload one of my dumb videos of me breaking something and fixing it the wrong way. So you can get a chuckle, I would appreciate that. Um, if you could, more than anything, drop me a line in the comments and say, what's up Johnny, guess what I broke? Uh, I'm almost as bad as you. That'd be awesome, I really enjoy the conversation part of this. And if you could uh, run over to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles on Facebook, um, it's basically just an easy way to keep the conversation going. You can post your videos, uh, you can post uh, pictures, whatever you want, um, and my messenger is linked to it, my phone number, so you can hit me up at text, messenger, all that nonsense. So it's just a fun way to keep commenting and keep the conversation going. Um, and that's, you know, like I always say, my favorite part of this whole hobby is talking to everybody and seeing what uh, other idiots are doing out there as I am. So today on Johnny's Motorized Bicycles, what we are doing to my motorized bicycle is we're going to add my fuel tank that I used to have, the gallon on my Pee Wee Herman bike. Um, but we're gonna take Tara Reed's old rack and we're gonna customize it to fit the new bike. I don't wanna drill any holes in the frame and I'm trying to get away from making any clamps mainly because I'm lazy and I don't have proper tooling to do it easily. Now I can do it, I'm just choosing not to out of being lazy. Now, if I have to, I will. Um, obviously, because you've seen all the nonsense I do do. <laughs> said do do. Um, but we're gonna try to get away with doing it the easy and cheap way, which is using the stock factory holes, which I believe are for a fender or something maybe on another model this frame came with. But now I'm gonna take the long ones and I'm gonna put them in those holes there. And I'm gonna anchor to the uh, frame in the front there like normal and then the main thing I'm doing all this for so I can get that gallon gas tank back on the bike and get that stupid little tank off because As great as it is having a little tank up there I like having the bare frame and I really like having a gallon gas tank because it just lets me go a whole day without filling the bike up This is what I got. This is the original rack. This is the original bar This bar was originally where this bar is I needed the length because this is a little taller all in all plus the way i'm mounting it i'm using the original holes uh in the frame the frame on the drops on the dropouts has holes that are for a rack i drilled the hole a little bigger on the dropout because i wanted to put this here i couldn't finish showing you last night because it was just too dark this is 100 on this is super sturdy on there um like i said i put an old uh seat post hanger here to have it sitting on here because I didn't want to drill through the frame obviously and I didn't want to bend them up to go to this. Uh, I did have to put a metal spacer because this was off of uh, like a, a aluminum bike and the aluminum tubes are usually just thicker or fatter I should say. Um, so I put a little metal spacer in there to take up the gap. It is on there nice and strong and sturdy, no wiggles, so I'm happy about that. It has a regular stock location for putting a basket on the bike if you want. This is definitely rated for way more weight then I'm gonna ever be carrying it the way I engineered it. Just in case, because you guys have all seen it, I'll be riding and I'll see a bike thrown in the garbage. I'll see something in the garbage I want. I always try to carry one ratchet strap with me, uh, zip ties and a tie down of some sort. So I put these, I had these in my bag from an old build I did for her. So I use these as my bolt. So in case I find something big and I wanna come down, I can, I can go right to it. That's super strong. It's in there really good. I use this from Tara Reed, the original basket. It's a little thicker, so I'm going to run the gas tank in the back here so uh, that's gonna be good uh, I'll have much more fuel uh, capacity then too I can get rid of the tank on the front clean up the front of the bike today I, I might try to tackle the rear rim and start getting it built because I really 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 love having that front rim on there except for when you're getting a good crosswind it was a little extra breezy you can feel it but is what it is it looks super cool definitely gonna be stronger and I really want to put that back there but I gotta make the hub I gotta adapt an old school hub to the new school flavor. All right, guys, you've definitely seen the back of this parking lot before. I'm at Quick Check, close to where I'm staying at. And uh, I figured I'd come over here because it's coffee time. And, uh, you know, for like the fifth time today, I drink a lot of these coffees. They're yummy and it keeps you cool. And it's not soda and there's no sugar. I don't put any real sugar I use equal because I'm worried about diabetes because I'm getting old. 
All right, anyway, so I'm gonna try to do some shots. Probably not gonna come out good, but you're gonna like it anyway. It's not finished because of the rear rim and some other things, but uh, let's see how it comes out, right? All right. Alright, welcome back to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles! Like always, thanks for tuning in. Um, like, subscribe, Johnny's Motorized Bikes, you know the drill, drop me a line! Anyway, I probably won't put that in a video. So, I am disassembling the axle, or the wheel I'm going to use for the axle for my mag wheel. As we all know, it is uh, missing the middle. So I need a new way to do that because that's the specialty stuff with sealed bearing, which is a super butter smooth ride. Believe me, I get that and I love it, but not feasible for me being a broke person, um, breaking a lot of axles. So I have this, a 24 inch wheel that is also butter smooth because it was brand new and never used, just super duper 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 old. Speaking of which, I definitely should have took that off before, dang it, before I took it off the spokes off, because it's going to be way harder to hold. Hmm, interesting. And I'm going to turn this into the new axle for that. All right, I'm going to video this just because I don't know what I'm going to do here, but see that straight edge, that abrupt edge right there? Not, not this, directly inside right there, the lip. I'm going to taper that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically backfill this with the uh, JB Weld. And I'm going to stick it in there so it's nice and snug. This, when it goes in, is completely level. Like, it's not, you know, it doesn't protrude at all. So, forget that for a second. Since that's the same size as this, this goes in. So my main thing, now I did Dremel this a little bit. I don't obviously have a machine to make it perfect, but it's pretty dang close. I didn't take much. It was really, it barely just didn't fit. So it was just, uh, like if you look over, you can see the gap is about the same all the way around. So I did my best uh, trying to be level, but uh, the main thing is this part fits just inside that lip, this lip here. So once I epoxy this in here, around here, this edge, and I stick this in. I'm going to take the epoxy and fill it all up in here, all down in there, to make sure it's in there really good. Then, I'm gonna fill this with epoxy a little bit, and I'm gonna hammer that down in there, so it's in there as far as it can, and so that the epoxy is all up in the edge, because this is tapered, you see the taper obviously. If you look close, See that lip right there? It's like a, a small concave part. That's gonna have epoxy in it, so that's good. And then I'm gonna take this bit and I'm gonna put angled cuts, just a couple cut, a deep cut there, a deep cut there, deep cut all the way around. I'm gonna do deep cuts so that once I push this in, the epoxy will have no place but to go out because I don't have a vacuum pump to take the air out of the epoxy. JB Weld, well, I say epoxy, but it's JB Weld. Okay, that's that side. Now, this is the side. Now see that line going all the way around? I put it in upside down. Well, I put it in upside down without the hub. Let me take that out. I put it in like this so I could cut it off where it is. You see where it is on this? It's just past the taper. Now that's gonna have this stick out just level with the hub 
which is how a regular hub would be in here. The bearing would be just about level, and it would protrude ever so slightly. All right. Down. So <clears throat> these are the two pieces I have finished and made. I'm going to backfill it with the epoxy so it hangs on in there. Um, put a small lip around it, and then I'll wipe off whatever extra. But I need it in there so it's biting. Now you see the tiger stripes I put all over it. Those are just little grinding marks I made. Um, I grinded it down or sanded it down in some spots so it has a tooth. Tooth meaning a place for the epoxy to grip onto, but since there's going to be so much force on this, on the backs of the races, on the inside of the hubs, on the outside of the hubs, on the <clears throat> actual inside of the hub of the wheel, I put those little tiger stripes. It's just a very slight indent that the epoxy, JB Weld, can go into and grab a hold of. Um, it will just basically fill that cavity, and by filling that cavity, it allows it to have something to grip onto, meaning it can't pull out of it because it would have to shrink the epoxy once it's hardened to actually pull out. So there's more than enough tooth on these to grab onto so that it doesn't come out. That's what we got. I'm about to just give them a good cleaning. I'm gonna toss them on in. Yeah, that's it. This is ready to go. I'm very excited. I like the way it came up. I put a lot of thought into this on how I'm gonna do it. Let's get to epoxying. I just put the JB Weld on. I know uh, one of my viewers out there is known for using JB Weld often and even made fun of to some point. I may not use JB Weld on the same level he does, but uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think whatever gets the job done, to each their own. If you're getting the job done and it's working, I think you're doing a good job. This is the other side. Now this is the side I got down because uh, this side is centered easily. This is the side that was going to be hard to get centered. Now there's a lot of slop all around, but uh, I'm not worried about that. There's a little bit in the race there, but I'm also not worried about that. I can just take my Dremel and clean it up sandpaper and clean it up. I'm not going to wear away the metal. I'm just going to take away the JB Weld. Same thing without here on the outside. There's nothing in the threads. I made sure I didn't get anything in the threads at the bare minimum. But uh, the more I was doing it, the harder it was to get it to be centered and be perfect. So I chose centered over perfect. Tomorrow it should be completely dry and I'll be able to start sanding it out. So uh, I guess I'll tune back in then 24 hours from right now, which it is, I don't know, I've been doing this for all freaking day. I'm pretty tired to be honest just sitting here doing this. It is officially 12.23. Tomorrow at midnight. <laughs> I'll be able to start playing with this. Well, this is what I woke up to. And by saying woke up, I mean woke up very late in the day. I, I found out it was like about 6 o'clock when I finally laid down. 6 o'clock in the morning. I uh, woke up around 12.30. Um, it's the weekend, so yeah, I gotta watch what I do. Sometimes I put a little too much time into this stuff without paying attention, especially since Heather wasn't home. So I think it, I th it looks like it's dead center. I think it did a good job this side too. I mean, it's in there hard. There's no moving. Now it still has more cure time needed. It really seems to be pretty good. So I'm very excited. All right, guys, so I'm pretty far along on this wheel. I'm actually assembling everything to get it going, but I'm putting together the hub right now. Just so you guys can see where I'm at. This is the uh, hub. I took it completely apart. The freewheel, I should say. I took it completely apart so I could, um, you know, re-grease it. Uh, I got the little clicker clacker things over here. The spring. It goes on here. Um, I always grease up the hub a little bit. I got the inner race greased up. And uh, I'm installing ball bearings. I, I just realized, I don't know if I showed you... <laughs> the final after this. Well, this is the one side. This was the easy side. Um, this is the race I installed. You see it's a tight fit. It's perfect. Um, and this is the other side with the race I installed. You can see the JB Weld. The dark spots is where the grease touched it. It just made it wet looking. But, um... You know, I sanded it down. Uh, it, it the race is up, but that's the top of the race. The uh, that's the part that actually slides into the hub. The hub is inside of this hub, um, with JB Weld around it to hold it tight. And this thing is 
I mean, it's yeah. it's freaking butter smooth, to be honest with you. Let's see if you guys see it. Keep the light on your eyes. I'm trying to hold it as still as possible. But I don't know if you can see the aluminum or the rim. Magnesium rim, really. It's butter smooth. This is nice. No real wiggle. All in all, this thing is great. Look at this guy. You guys remember him? Dre from uh, how I got my bicycle stolen from a 10 year old? Well, there he is, riding by doing a wheelie. Not bad. I am trying to install the rear rim that matches my front rim. That looks super, super cool. On this side, I put in the five speed, but I needed the space right here. And you, as you can see, I have plenty of space to put in a proper flat washer and lock washer. Great, that's awesome. That worked out wonderful. So we're good on that side. With the first set of rims I had about a year ago when I bought these rims and ruined them, I had the same issue, which is why I originally went to a 32 tooth sprocket. As you can see on this bike, like the other one when I had it, it hits right here. Now with the smaller diameter sprocket, it goes back to where uh, the chain connects, where the forks, the dropouts are wider. Cool. That works. I don't want to run a 32 tooth sprocket. I really want to stick with the 44 tooth sprocket. Because of the width of this hub, it, it doesn't line up. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the crook in the chain. Now where the chain tensioner is and to where it comes, that's got to be a good, I don't have a measurement here, but it's got to be about five millimeters, let's estimate. So I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take about five millimeters off of this hub and cut it back. Now it shouldn't be a problem. Um, the only issue I'm gonna have to see is I had already pre-drilled and tapped this without cutting down the hub because I was assuming it was gonna work. Honestly, I completely forgot that that is the reason why I went to a 32 tooth sprocket because I couldn't get the hub thing to work and then eventually strip the bolts out. I don't have that rim to show you. Just gonna have to take my word for it. Totally screwed it up. The chain is not tracking in a straight direction. I'm gonna have to move it over. Now I'm thinking I should just eyeball it, but that's probably the worst way to do it. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Let's be serious. We all know the way I work. Uh, I, we all know I'm super scientific with the way I do things and how I make things work. I hope you fall and break your ankle, little kid. I don't help hope that. <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty much just going to eyeball it and do it all by hand because I really don't have the tools to do it. I don't have a lathe or anything like that. What'd you say? Punk? Yeah, I hope your pants get caught in your chain. <laughs> now I wanted to put a disc on here for disc rotors, uh, brakes, and um, as it is I wouldn't be able to fit that on now anyway. So I, no matter what to make this happen I would have to either make a super custom sprocket and cut out the middle and move the whole thing over which is something I just instantly thought about doing now, is just taking the sprocket, putting on my adapter, and moving the whole thing over. I'm gonna have to get it inside and see, because honestly, the, the, I have one of those adapters for the rotor and the sprocket, and that might be enough if I attach it on the left side of the adapter. All right, guys, uh, I didn't really record all of it, mainly because I just, I was up doing it till like three o'clock last night, but the end result, well, I finally came up with because the only thing I could come up with was blah 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 all this BS I've got to cut the hub down can't make it happen I made it happen without cutting the hub down so on the outside here now don't mind the big wash this is just what I had I wanted to make sure I didn't mar up the CNC aluminum billet aluminum and all that this is a mount to hold a brake rotor and then obviously this is meant to hold a sprocket well, this, with a little massaging, fits over top of the hub, all right? This ring I was just wearing, you can see, this is the middle of this sprocket. So I cut the middle of the sprocket out. Yeah, you see the way it's got all those holes? Yeah, I, I drilled a bazillion holes and then I cut it out with the Dremel. It was not easy to do. I cut, if you could see in there, see how it's over the hub? I cut it. And I bolted the, the spindle then to this bracket, and this bracket I bolted 
directly to the hub. So this thing is on there tight. Let's see if I can get it to spin and have a little motion. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks pretty straight to me. This is way more solid than a uh, rag joint. Now I left these long. I didn't do anything extra. I just have it all tightened down. I'll probably uh, maybe put different flat washers in. I don't, honestly don't know. I just did this because it's what I had, and I wanted to make sure I didn't mar anything up or ruin it. I didn't cut these off yet. I'll eventually cut this off. I don't need them that long, but they cleared everything, so it's good and it's strong. And I gotta try it on the bike. I'll try it on the bike tomorrow. It's late and it's time to go to bed. Okay guys, so the wheel is on. You can see it doesn't hit the frame. It's close, but it doesn't hit it. I'm completely fine with that. Before, what are you thinking about doing? <laughs> oh, that's not heavy enough. What if you were to like stand on it and kneel on it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you can you are you because you got more dexterity than me if you yeah what if you want to take the rag and put it down so you can actually put your knee on it would that help yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep all that energy and use it on the saw <laughs> I know right <laughs> I would still hold it with your hand to like keep it balanced lean your knee up against your hand kind of all right guys it is now dark out and we are working by light the alignment seems good I gotta ride it and make sure it's not rubbing all right guys so. This is where we are at. I'm done. I put the fuel tank in. I love the way it makes the bike look. It makes the bike look so much cleaner. But all in all, it's real good. It looks good. Um, I like the feel. It's riding nice, it rides smooth, no issues or anything crazy going on with it. I'm really happy about that. Not really much else you could say. I mean, it's, it's really, it's a nice little ride. Um, all right, that's it for now, guys. I will uh, talk to you later, I suppose. And uh, I guess till then, uh, as always, hit the like for me. If you could, try uh, hitting the subscribe button and a little bell notification. That'd be awesome. Helps the YouTube algorithm. I'm really trying to hit a 1,000 subscribers. If you could also uh, leave me a comment, most of all, I'd appreciate that a lot. And run over to Johnny's Motorized Bicycles on Facebook and uh, join the group, post up pictures, post up uh, whatever. My uh, Facebook is linked, um, obviously, and you can message me on Messenger or any of that. Um, my phone number's in there too, if you really wanted to call and text, I really have no issues with that too, honestly. I really, I'm all about community and talking. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.